You might not see it, but you're standing in victory. Listen, I can tell you about pain. And I can tell you about change. Change, I've been there. And I've had some teaching this morning. Uh, at the end of every year, at the end of every year, you have a purpose that you want to do something new and be an improved you in 2019. Would you like to have your listeners say this declaration with me? I want a better me. I want a better me in 2019. Many people want to better them, but they don't know how to get there. So I'm going to give you a recipe today that's going to help you to transition. So if I don't holler, if I don't scream, if they come up on me, I don't know. I want you to get a writing and test of, uh, an instrument. Get your phone, go to your notes section, because I want you to make notes about you as you go through this lesson. Because my purpose is that you would be a better you in 2019. Amen. Amen. That you would be a better you in 2019. Praise the Lamb of God. That you would be a better you in 2019. My mama told me, don't, don't eat, don't get more food than you won't eat. So yes, I sir. take that literally as I approach the scripture. So I only take what I'm going to eat. So James chapter 4 verse 6. James chapter 4 verse 6. Amen. James chapter 4 verse 6. When you get this, say, I've got it. If not, you can look at the closest screen to you and it will be a blessing to your heart. I only want the first five words. It simply says this really with me. He gives us more grace. Say it again. He gives us more grace. That's it. I want to talk for a few moments from that particular thought. More grace. When you wait till you see just hit to wake off your day to say, how's this going to talk about more grace? Grace. Why more grace? Are you ready to learn? Why do I need more grace? Why is James suggesting we need more grace? Romans chapter 5 verse 20 says it like this. It says that the law was brought in so that the trespasses might increase. Next slide. And he goes on to say after he says those words, but where sin increased... Grace increased all the more. Somebody holler, more grace. more grace. So the system of laws that's in our way today, the reason why uh, the law system don't want you to speed is so that they can keep down transgressions. That's why when you're driving 10 or 15 over the speed limit, you, your eyes gauge over where you're supposed to be. And, and it's, it's, it's that conundrum of what the law was in scripture is that God has put some things in place to keep you from being wild, W-I-L-D. Anybody ever know somebody that's just went overboard and was wild? You remember your days in the world where you did some things, but you just wasn't as wild. I mean, you came home late, but you, you dare not come to mama's house sloppy drunk and, 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 and somebody have to bring you in the house and you didn't even uh, in your own vomit. That's wild. You, you, you had some few friends, but uh, there's some people that was more wild than others. And, and this is what the law did in times past, my brothers and sisters. It was, to, it was to keep us to a limitation of our transgressions and trespasses. And, and by default, you all of you today suggest that all of you have some affinity with the law. The law is the word of the Lord. And that is, it helps me. I, 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 I still may cuss a little bit. But, it, but but without the law, I would be wild. Y'all come on, talk to me. Uh, I would slap you with the holy hush more often than I would, but because of the law, I kind of abide by it a little better. Somebody say, thank God for the law. Now, then, well, we're not under law. That's right, we're not under law, but God said that the law is good for those who use it lawfully. 
So if you use the law lawfully and the law is good, it keeps order. Can you imagine a world with no law? Can you imagine a world with no judge system? Can you imagine a world? Well, my brothers and sisters, that day is coming, but that day is not now. So Romans 5 and 20 lets us know why we need the law or why we need more grace is because there's still more sin. Y'all don't know when to shout. What do you do when you qualify for the job because of your color? Because of where you're from, they won't hire you. Y'all, yeah. And what do you do once you pay your penalty in the, the penal system and then you come out? You serve your time, but nobody will hire you. Nobody will hire you because they see your reputation on your interview. How many know you want to need more grace? And, and so how many know that there's some years that you take by, you didn't eat properly right by your body, you smoked a little bit, you drank a little bit, now you got this nagging cough, now you got some illness in your body. How many know that sin is going to require more grace? And, and that's what we need more grace is because the times we are living in, my brothers and sisters, sin will increase and abound the more. But aren't you glad yes, that the Lord has built into our world enough grace for us to escape the sin and struggle that we are all facing right now? The law separates three kinds of people. Make this notation. The law is important because it separated uh, the people who, number one, those who don't know better. Now you have a remnant of people who live in the world. They don't know no better. Praise God. You pray for them because, watch this, when you don't know no better, you ain't even have a, 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 you don't even have a chance of doing any better. So you have, number one, those who don't know better. Number two, you have those who know better. And that's why I come to church week after week after week after week is to do what? To know how to do better. Because if what I don't know, I can't do. Y'all don't know when to shout. If I don't know it, and that's in every area of your life. If you don't know how to save money and budget money, you blow everything you get. Because you're penalized that you're doing it's always included into what you know. It's those who you who don't know, those who now know better, and then also, number three, those who are doing better. Yes. Let me serve this disclaimer, and that is this. Those who know better yes. don't automatically do better. Yes. That's right. That's right. Yeah, some folks raised in a home and knowing better. It don't necessarily mean their lives are doing better. It's because you have to take what is given and apply it to make sure that your life is better. The law was good, but it wasn't grace. Say that with me. The law was good, but it wasn't grace. Grace is the healing of the cancer patient. Uh, the law is chemotherapy. I want you to get this thing. When the cancer is increasing in the body, they say, we want to give you chemotherapy to radiate the cells that are trying to kill you. But watch this. The cancer that's killing you, the chemotherapy is killing you too. <laughs> Y'all go. Right now. Because they're only meant to cross out. And the more cancer you have, the more intense the chemo has to be. But there's no healing in the chemo. Okay. The healing is in the grace. Yes. And that's what Jesus Christ has done for us, my brothers and sisters. The chemo is working, but we still remain weak. But God says, I want to give you grace that I'm not only going to eliminate the things that held you back, but I'm going to heal you so you can move forward with great pace. Somebody holler, more grace. In 2019, God told me to tell you this. He's going to ask you this question. Do you want me working with you or against you? Okay, y'all won't get it here. Yes, Either God works with you or God works against you. Both of them are a form of his love. Don't miss it. The key to understanding God is understanding that in every circumstance and situation in your life, he puts it in there so you can learn something. Those who've lived a little while, you know that some things that you suffered and went through in life, it was for you to learn. And it's sad when people go through the same cycles of life over and 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 over, and over again and they don't learn anything. That cause they miss God in the lesson. In Proverbs 13 verse 14, it says something uh, to us. Read with it. it says, the teachings of the wise is what? 
a fountain of life, turning one from the snares of death. Scoot up close. You can die early based upon what you don't know. Yes, you can. And the scripture lets us know, saints of God, that God is a teaching God. He's a God that uses every circumstance, every setback, every shortage in your life to teach you. Uh -huh. Even those things make you bitter towards God or it makes you better towards Him. And God is a God of grace. Ah. Yes. He's a God who wants to favor you, but you have to be willing not to turn a deaf ear to what He wants to teach you, but know that when God is teaching you, it's a fountain of life. Yes. Praise the Lord. Suggesting to us that without the teachings of Christ, we are nothing more than sheep without a shepherd headed for a cliff with no one to turn us around. Yes, sir. And some of us have lived our lives. Anybody testify on yourself today and say, I have been towards a cliff, seemed like I was going to fall off of it because I was stuck on stupid and I was going to do it my own way. I wish I had some real witnesses to testify here. But thank God that somebody came along. Thank God for the rocks God threw. Thank God for hollering at me. Thank God for distracting my attention from what I was doing to give me an opportunity. Somebody holler, more grace, more grace. Every situation in Scripture where God was working against his people, watch this, was not always a sign of rejection. It was a sign of resistance. And sometimes you are so equally what you want to do, God has to resist what you're trying to do. And some of you say, well, why God won't help you? Why God won't do this? Why God won't do it? You know what? what the answer is? It's because it ain't nothing God wanted you to do. If God can get in the garden of Gethsemane and stand in the face of Jesus when he was crying for him to move the cup and not go to the cross and tell him, no, I ain't going to help you. Stay in there, get somewhere, and get ready to die. Get out of my face, Jesus. In other words, I'm resisting what you're trying to quit on. Uh, Y'all like, Yo, won't get it in a minute. God's resistance is a form of his love. Say that with me. God's resistance is a form of his love. Love is an acronym I want to give to you today. Resistance of his love. Love is, first of all, lessons. Yes. They are lessons. When you have lessons, it's for you to learn something unique about God. That's right. You should be able to go through your life and see that it's some stuff you went through in life that put you in a place where you say, you know what? Yes, sir. God is a healer. Wow. Or you say, you know what? God is a God of a second chance. Yes, he is. If I surveyed this room, I'm sure somebody would shout yes, and say, that's some yes, stuff some people died from oh, that I didn't die yes, from. And I learned the lesson to take care of my body and to yes, watch what I eat and watch what I drink. So you think some people stuff oh, why they just won't taste this? I oh, taste that diabetic tea. I, no, I, 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 you, know, you, you know what I'm fighting against in my body? No, that's a lesson. Yes, so that's a form of God's love when he resists you. He resists you with lessons. He puts Jonah on the boat to teach him something. What's that? There ain't no other way but God's way. You'll learn that in a minute. Number two, a mission. Meaning God allows to resist you because there's some things you left undone. How many got children that wants the gifts even though they've been clean? Y'all ain't gonna say amen. 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 Glory to God. I still want everything that you promised me. Did you do what I asked you? No, that ain't what you said. You promised. No, I promise you, but it was conditional. <laughs> Are y'all gonna help me here? And so God resists you because, watch this, there's some things in life you omit. He told you to pray for you when in there. And you didn't do it. And you said everything you wanted to say, but he told you to pray and you still didn't do it. So you didn't get the job. Now you're mad at God. You're so mad at God, you stopped tithing. You won't even come to church no more. You're mad. You upset because you felt he failed you. No, he didn't fail you. He resisted you. Lessons on mission number two. Sometimes God's love brings about a resistance because he's trying to validate you. And some of you are there in your life right now where God's trying to validate you. And otherwise, he's trying to legalize something uncommon. When you, This is what happened with Jesus when he was trying to validate him. Jesus didn't fit in. God cut him in. I'm about to take it on right now. Some of you would never qualify for the systems of this world and to do it cookie cutter the way they want you to do it to succeed. And God is so powerful 
that he already knows that they're not going to let you in. He already knows they're going to fight against you. But watch this. When God be for you, I got some witnesses up there. Who can stand against you? That's the validation of God coming in the clouds. Looks at Jesus says, my son in whom I am well pleased. Wait a minute. He hadn't healed nobody. He hadn't done no miracles. Can I tell you this? You don't have to work for grace, baby. <laughs> you qualify for grace just because God likes you like that. I guess somebody raise your hand and say he just loves me like that. That's my validation is that he loves me like that. Well, what, well Michael, why are you? Well, I'm there because the Lord just loves me like that. Well, how are you making it? I'm making it because he just loves me like that. I'm not qualified. I'm so stupid half of the time. But God validates us in the name of Jesus. And E is the fact that God resists us, watch this, until we've had enough. And some of you will testify right now. Scoot up close. Let me tell you this because I believe this will minister everybody in the house. You was going to do it until death. Yes, sir. You grit your teeth that God and said, I got the energy to withstand you. I'm going to do it till I'm yes, satisfied. Sir. I said it before myself. Then you say it. Yes, sir. Now, uh -huh. you said it. You said it. You locked yourself in the mirror in the house. I'm going to do it. You uh -huh. sassy. You going to the club anyway. Lord, I already told you. He didn't want to go anyway. You, you going to do it the way you want. You going to spin it the way you want to. And God sits there until you get tired. Yes. And holds you back. Holds your blessing. Holds your promise back. Holds what he promised you. Jeremiah 5.25 says he puts it on the shelf yes. until you get some get right. Yes. <laughs> Y'all read your Bible sometimes. And you sit there fighting this guy. That's all right. I remember being in school for young people. I told my coach I was being defiant one day. And uh, I was a star basketball player. So I didn't think that I had to do what everybody else had to do because I'm the star. They ain't come to see him, they come to see me. Okay, okay. Y'all ain't gone. Come on, I'm trying to help you with you too. Come on, come on. And go say, you know what? I'm sick of your attitude. You put me on the line and say, you are wrong until you conform. I said, well, look like I'm going to be running all day. But just know this, coach, I've got the strength to keep on running. So, run suicide. And this is what I did at first, right? I ran, and I went, got down on the line, come back, and I saw I had to make it to 28 seconds. I saw, I saw, I saw 26, 27, 28. And then what I did is I jumped over the line. He said, you late. I said, it's all good. I was already on time anyway. And he said, so, so you want to play with me, huh, play? I said, coach, I don't even know why you're taking me through this. You know the people are coming to see me. You know that? And so, so he put me on the line, y'all. I ran probably suicide for two hours. <laughs> because I didn't want to conform. I was waiting to break his will so he could bow down to me and not me bow to him. I'm waiting on y'all here. I'm about to turn into preaching now. Some of you have been defiling against the will of God and the teachings of God and the anointing of God on your life and the calling he has for you. You've been just hanging in mud and throwing up in vomit. God been calling you. You've been telling him, I'm going to stay where I am. But can I tell you? God's will will never break. Ask Jonah when he had suicide of uh, seaweed around his neck in the belly of a whale. God says, I'll be here when you come out. Y'all ain't going to help me here. How many know that God loves you so much he will fight you over your will until you conform until the will of God. That's why Jesus had to say what Peter said and that was this nevertheless. Y'all better come give it not my will. But let me hold you on. Uh, lean over and hit your neighbor next to you and say, he loves me in some crazy ways. Look at these people, the will of God. Look at what the Bible says. He was running his ass, the donkey. And when he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the road, my brother, that's the word for you today. The Lord will stand in the road against the path you want to take. Until you bow down and do what he's told you to do. Look what he says. When the donkey saw the angel of the Lord standing in the road, the angel of the Lord had thrown his sword in his hand. Next, yes, yes. You see that? Yeah. Y'all see that? Somebody holler resistance. Resist. Look at verse saints. A lot of the things that you are claiming that Satan is holding you back from ain't Satan at all. It's the Lord. The angel of the Lord was sent to resist Jim. Uh, and not only did it happen to the prophet Balaam, but it also happened to Joshua. 
Joshua was used to fighting. How many fighters I got in here? You're going to yes, fight sir. tooth and nail. You ain't going to let nobody get nothing over you. You're going to fight. I'm like, God, you're going to tell somebody, I don't, I'm going to do it in spite of you. I don't need you. Tell folks, I don't need you. I'm going to do it on my own. I, I, I've been there. Been yes, there. Sir. Look what's up when Joshua was a fighter. Look what it said. And when Joshua was near Jericho, he looked up and saw a man standing in front of him. And he had his sword drawn in his hand. Joshua, who's the fighter, uh, uh, yes, come here, Deacon Doctor. Come here. Stand right over there. Let me minister someone just face to face. To face. <laughs> See, this is what we do with God. And this is what you did in 2018. When things get tough, you know, you even do God like this. Whose side you on, player? Right? You on my side or you on the enemy side? See? And that's what we try to do in our lives. Go ahead, anybody in here that lives life trying to figure out if people are for you or against you. That's your whole life. If they don't help you, you must be against them. If they for you, you love them until they seem like they're against you. And we do that with God. And Joshua was used to fighting, used to trying to see who's on his side, who's not. So he gets up in the angel's face. He says man because uh, that's the only way he could equate this angelic-like being in the human earth. He gets up in, in God's face and he says this, are you for us? Are you for the enemy? Uh, right? Yeah. And, and, and next, next slide, it says this. It says, uh, go back to where you were. Uh, if you read verse 14, it says like this. And God, through the angel, says, I ain't on neither one of y'all's side. Y'all miss it. When you don't have Christ teaching and don't have his understanding, you think your life is for you. So you divide your whole life to see who's on my side, who ain't on my side, and the angel tells him, player, this is not how heaven works. It's not who am I on your side, it's not am I on Jericho's side. The question is, whose side are you on? Look down your road and say, neighbor, are you on the Lord's side or are you on your side? And he resisted him. And he resisted him. And he resisted him. When God resists you, he's not working with you. He's working against you. The Bible says it like this. The way of the transgression is hard. Meaning when you transgress against God and you want to do it the way you want to and not the way of the Lord, then he says, I'm going to make it hard for you. Give me an example. God says in his word that when somebody's talking praise to you, it says, return a soft answer to them. Yes. That's what the word says, right? That's Proverbs 15, verse 1. Yes. So the word of God comes to your heart while somebody's talking and spitting and all that stuff at you and you got an attitude and looking all crazy. And you getting ready. You ready. You ready. You ready. Yes, you ready. Yes, you ready. Yes, you ready. Yes, as soon as they get through talking. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Come on, y'all hear me. Y'all know. You got all what you used last time. You, you already know how you're going to wrap this snake word around this neck. I hear her talking, but I already know I'm going to shut it down. And then the Holy Ghost do like this. Just, 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 just answer with a soft word. And you look at the Holy Ghost and ask the Holy Ghost, who's you are. And the Holy Ghost will say, I'm not on your side. And I'm not on their side. Whose side are you on? In 2019, we must purpose that we want to represent Christ. Not want Christ to be a representation of us. You're going to get it on your way home. Neither side is what God says. And the angel instructs you that you can get the gift that God already has established, but only for those who are willing to obey. Yeah. Ah, that's good. David says this word, he says, I understand that you got to get in what God is already doing. And that's my prayer for you as you move forward in the, in, in, for the end of this year, is you find out every area of your life, if you're making a notation, that God is not represented in my life. In your faith, is God represented on what you believe? Your belief system determines how you act. 
If you act crazy, it simply means you don't have much of a belief system. Right? In your faith, in your finances. Is God in your finances? Right? How do we know? Well, just look at you. Just look at your report. Stop crying about being in debt and always being last when you make God last. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's good. Yes, sir. I want to really help the saints. Because saints cry about stuff and they, watch this, they defile God. He says to do this. No, I can't do that, Lord. Okay. So when you're struggling and you're going through and you feel this way, accept it. That that is a part of the resistance of God that he held back his joy, held back his peace because it only comes when we do the will of the Father. Praise the Lamb of God. 1 Samuel 17, 26, David was going down there uh, uh, to, the, to the fight. And when he got down there, my brothers and sisters, look what he says. He says, now I know I can't get blessed because of my skill set. The only way I can be blessed is to find out the way God wanted it done. So he goes down there and he sees Saul and them down there afraid of the big, uh, the big giant, Brother Marvin, uh, called Goliath. So when he gets down there, he says, well, I know that this big giant is in violation of disrespecting God. Watch this. Some of the things you fight over don't have nothing to do with God. The Bible says you have every right to provoke your brothers and sisters. But watch this, he said this. To do good works. Right. So when was the last time you got on with somebody because they didn't do what was right? Yes, sir. Not going after them because they did something wrong. Y'all see this? So David found out, I got to get into what God is doing. So look what he asks, big questions during his screen. He says, what uh, will the man get who kills the Philistine who has defiled the armies of God? That's what David asked in his question. David, like James, is suggesting to us that if we have the same goals as God, we can receive more grace to accomplish it. Did you get that? Yes. Some saints of God praying to God and talking with Christ every day to find out what is the will of God for my life. It's the only way to win uh -huh. in 2019 for you. Amen. You have tried your way. Anybody try some stuff your way that didn't work? Yes, sir. Right. You said it your way it didn't work, right? But you got to understand, my brothers and sisters, that when God wants to, somebody holler, God, give me more grace. <laughs> uh, listen, he wants you to have it. And, and what pastor is trying to do is get you to remove the things, praise the Lord, that will get in the way. See, next year, uh, we're going to need more grace on all we're trying to accomplish as a church. We're trying to do some things, I'm telling you, and you would think, well, Pastor, why don't we just wait till the church is jam-packed full again? Why don't we just wait till we got a millionaire join the church? Why don't we just wait on that? No, waiting upon human support shows a lack of faith. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah, man. He told Gideon, Gideon, you got 10,000. He says, you got too many. He said, what do you mean too, too many? 10,000, they got more than we do. He says this, the less you have, the more I am displayed to be a help to you. Anybody ever had little and God got in your little and you looked at your mom and the bills and you said to yourself, this is what you said. You said, sell, 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 huh? And when huh said to sell, praise the Lord, we don't have enough money to pay the bills. Watch this. By the time the last day of the month came, you looked and saw everything paid and was able to stop by Wendy's and get a half piece, 10 nugget, y'all come get me, and a beverage and be able to tell the Lord, he look at it, he did it again. Now I just want to know, do I got about 10 people jump up on your feet and just say, I need more grace, I need, I need more grace, I wish I had a witness, y'all. Y'all sit down, grace, 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 what is grace? Paul Morton had a song, he said in the song, Lord, whatever, you are doing in this season. Lord, don't do it without me. See, that's not you telling God what you're going to do and he'll get on your bandwagon. It's you find out what God is doing in your life and you join in with him. That's why the Bible teaches us on how to pray when he talks to disciples. It says, our Father, y'all know which are in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Yes, thy will be done on earth yes. as. Yes, if y'all want to get it in there. Yes, See, when you find out how you are living in heaven, yes, then you will ask that that will be done in the earth. Praise the Lamb of God. Oh, yes. Praise
praise the Lamb. James is teaching us that the very able, present help of the Holy Spirit yes, sir. is not only the author, but he's the conveyor. Yes, sir. He's the conveyor. He's the conveyor of all good gifts that come from the Lord. Uh -huh. He is given to us to keep us from wasting our lives. Anybody ever felt like your life was wasting away? Yes, sir. And let me tell you something, if you feel like your life is wasting away, it's because you're missing an impartation of the Holy Spirit. You need the impartation of the Holy Spirit to help you to feel like your life is not wasting away. It will aid you, praise the Lord, that you won't be weak to sin and shame, and it will prevent you from being weary and faint in your mind. Saints of God, you would think because all of us in here are dressed up and looking good and smelling good, that all of us have it together. But there's some saints that are in here, young men, young women, old man, old lady, let me tell you something, that are struggling with faintness of mind. You've already given up, but you're still trying to live. Have you ever seen a dead person walking? Praise the Lord. It, it, it simply suggests that I'm just existing, but I'm not living. But God, can I tell you, if you get a dose of the ghost, you get it. And James says, if you ask God for the one that can give no grace, let me show you what more grace looks like. I'm having a bad day. But I've got the Holy Ghost in it. So what the Holy Ghost does, it overrides how bad my day is. And I'm able to see greater is he that is in me. Hallelujah. That he that's in the world. And when, when I seem like I don't have a plan, I leave on the Holy Ghost. And then he tells me how it's going to work out. He'll say, go down here, do this, call such and such. And they're going to do that. Now it's done. Stop worrying. Y'all, y'all gotta know that when God gives you more grace, you can overcome anything that is going on in your life. Governmental shutdown. We're living in the time, saints of God, you are going to need well more grace. Nobody in here would ever want to feel like uh, the people that are paying you just call you in tomorrow and tell you we can't help you no more. Cut your benefits. Uh, somebody says that we're getting ready to relive some of the older days uh, that took place where, y'all remember that the, the Great Recession where people had money in banks. And, and they lived off because they had savings. They said, we're going to return to the day where you got money in the bank as a number. But you're going to go there and they're going to tell you, we ain't got nothing for you. And because we have to understand that we can't live on the systems of this world. Yes, sir. They're full of sin. They're, yes, they're full of sin, politicians, and, and we can't we can't depend on humanity. You will need something that assists God in heaven called the Holy Spirit. If you lost everything right now and still had Jesus, would it be enough for you? Can you imagine the people that's gonna lose everything and don't have it? To lose everything and don't have Christ is almost human suicide. Yes, well, aren't you glad that the most sin in this world, the most things that fight against you, the things that come against your mind, the things that come against your body, aren't you glad that God is the answer? And that answer that lives is just not something that sits high, but it lives on the inside of you. More grace to love the unlovable. More grace to lead our families and our faith institutions. More grace to live a healthier life. More grace to be holy and humble before the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what the Lord wants to do. In my close, I want to give you these five grace principles that I want you to go through your life before the year is over. You're getting ready to take a break. You're going to be eating ham and all that kind of stuff at home. You're going to be relaxing and amen. You ain't got nowhere to go, breaking wind under the cover. But why are you doing that? I want you to assess your life. Because to do what you've always done is to get the same results you've always got. That's right. Praise the Lord. Here are the five keys to grace. And I'm going to walk through these. And, and, and you make whatever notes you wish. And I'm going to close. Are you ready? The five keys in more grace of your life. Number one. Are you ready? Set goals. Set goals. Let me ask you this. Are you doing in 2018 what you said you was going to be doing in 2018? Oh, I didn't plan that, Pastor. Oh, you did? No, I just I have it come. I just go with what comes. Okay. 
Have you been productive? I don't know. How do you find productive? Uh, how do you define productive? I like, should I sit on the porch every day and, 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 and you know, get some tea and stuff like that? And, and Jimmy Dale didn't be down there, I go down there and play with them a few times. And, and that's it, they eat some fish on Friday. <laughs> that's about all. Right? <laughs> Set goals. Proverbs 16, verse 9 says this man, a man's heart devises his plans. But you need the Lord to order your steps. Rebecca 2 and 2 says it like this. Write the vision. Make it plain. If you wrote down on one sheet of paper what your life looks like in 2019, let me ask you this. What would that piece of paper look like? Uh, yes, sir. I would be debt free. How are you going to do it? You can't do it buying shoes every time. You buy shoes. Lord Jesus. <coughs> shoes you, you can wear, can't wear. Thinking about wearing. You can't do it. Because the plan is going to do three things for you. Write this down. It keeps you from detours. Detours, if you want to find detours, is you take a roundabout way from the original route. Anybody ever been guilty of making some detours in your life? Oh, yeah. We're getting ready to fast here in January for 21 days. I already know that first week is going to be some detours. <laughs> Amen. Like Bill Cosby did with them hoagies. His wife tried to meet him home. She put a, a, a chain on the refrigerator. He <laughs> got one of them. So, and, and he snuck down in the night. He thought he had until he reached for the door and had a chain on. She had a law and everything on. Because watch this, if you don't stick to the plan, plans help you keep from detour. Number two, it keeps you from what? Distractions. Distractions is things that keep you from giving full attention to your plan. And there are some things in your life that will keep you from doing what you say that you want to do. Number three, it keeps you from, everybody say, deception. That's fraud, that's cheating, trickery. Someone comes along. David says in the scripture when the man says, oh, you King David, I'll give you the threshing floor, which was his place of prayer and sacrifice to God. He says, I'll give it to you for free. And David said, no. If you give it to me for free, then that mean I cheat God in this. He says, no, I shall pay full price. Amen. So deception, don't let nobody deceive you from that. So you set goals. What does goals do? It, it, it removes what? Detours. Number two, it removes what? Distractions and lastly, it removes what? Yeah. All right. So if you you gotta have a plan. All right. Young people try to give you a plan of chastity. And one thing that distracts young people is sexual immorality. All right. It, it, and then when it comes and gives fruit in your life, it's sometimes the worst thing that you feel. Amen. And you need something that motivates you in that area of your life to keep yourself. Amen. Praise God. And that's what it is. We're fasting. What does that do? It makes you have to watch your diet. Some of y'all, when we was fasting last, you looked like y'all was 16 again around the neck. Amen. But not, not, not now, but, but, you know, holidays, Thanksgiving. Okay. All right. So, number one is what? Set goals. Number two, write this down. Stand in your mind. Normally, when you think of standing, you think about somebody standing on their feet. But you got to stand in your mind before you ever stand up in your feet. Praise God. 1 Corinthians 10 and 12 says these words. It says, so you think you stand, but you better be careful unless you fall. Anybody ever assume to be stronger than you was with something you wasn't? Yes, sir. Right? You said, I got this. Uh, hey, man, I didn't put down my, yes, my ways. I, uh, I'm, I'm a love of God. I, really, oh, yeah. I can withstand anything. Say what you want to say to me. I can withstand then something happened. What happened? I told you! <laughs> right? Because you thought you were stronger than uh, you really were. Right? Don't let circumstances and crazy people keep you from holding on to what you believe. Standing in your mind is simply means you have a belief. Praise God. Romans 11 verse 20 says it like this. It says, granted, but they were what? Broken off. Because of what? There will be people who come in your life to keep you from believing in yourself and your dreams and your goals. And you have to not let them break you off from what you believe. Yes, sir. 
Praise the Lamb of God. You think this is the right time to do this? You think no. you can do this? What about this? What about that folk name a hundred things that, that, that you ain't even considered? You seem to even consider. No, no, no. We live by faith and not by sight. Right? Do not be arrogant, but tremble. Standing, watch this. If planning removes things, standing releases things. It releases three things in your life. You can make this notation. It releases strengthening for your faith. It'll strengthen your faith. My faith is the object that I have to believe God for something. And when I stand in my mind, regardless of what you tell me, I believe God. This is what Noah had to have when he built the ship. He had to have some standing in his mind because he never seen the rain either. But he kept saying, it's going to rain, get your house in order. It's going to rain, get your house in order. And he was strong in the 20th year as he was in the 100th year because he stood in his mind. Number two, it puts you one step forward. That's what standing does. It puts you one step forward. Life is meant to resist and blow you back like running on a treadmill, right? When you start running on a treadmill, you fall off of it. But when you stand in your mind, praise God. It's almost like taking steps without moving. Ah. Number three, it secures your focus. The more you stand, the stronger you become. All right? And that's why many saints and brothers and sisters can never achieve anything. It's because by the time February, we're going to come. Everything you promised yourself in January, you quit. You go buy the tights. You got the, the vegan drink. The, the, Y'all got everything. V8 juice. <laughs> Got the membership paying $10 a month, right? You gonna do it. I'm gonna get in it. And then February comes and honey, I'm tired. Hey, anybody got time? And, and the less you stand, the weaker you become. First Corinthians 15, 58, you can write it down, it says, Therefore, my brothers, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord. Because you know that your labor is in the Lord and it is not in vain. Amen. And that's what God wants you to have. Number three, write this down. Forgive yourself. Everything that you failed at 2018, get a grip with yourself. It's okay if you thought yourself to have failed, but get yourself together and forgive. Acts 1, 18, 19 talks about how Judas could not forgive himself. And because he couldn't forgive himself, he killed himself. Raise your right hand, I pledge allegiance. Before the Lord. Before the Lord. To forgive myself. To forgive myself. Of all things. For they have passed away. In Jesus' name. Y'all receive that? How many know you're going to fall short sometime in life? You're going to feel like giving up sometime in life. You want to go over and say, I can do anything I say, but pick yourself back up. The Bible says a righteous man falls seven times, but he gets himself back up. See, the power is in keep getting back up. The power is not in the fact that you keep failing, it's in the fact you keep getting back up. And I encourage you, my brothers and sisters, that when you have your goals set this year, 2019, as you get ready to move forward into your life, pick yourself back up. My God, I, I, I almost stopped writing the book. Uh, I tell you, I was writing. I said, well, I'll finish it later. I said, no, do it now. Do it. I was like, oh, well, today, I'm tired, man. Well, maybe, maybe, maybe this is not a good time to do it. Listen, procrastination will kill us all. We have to do what we have purpose in our heart to do. We must do it now. Number four, be a warrior. If you think that life is going to let you be better on your own without resistance, you're a fool. You got to be a warrior. And I like what he says in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 3. He says these words, endure hardness as a good soldier. Amen. Church ain't producing soldiers anymore. They, they producing something else. But I can create a play in this house that brothers and sisters in here will be soldiers and warriors. You say, I got some wounds. Pastor, and I feel like giving up, but I'm still standing. And after you've done all you can, you just... praise God. When you're warring, there are three things that apply to you. Number one, you're guarded. You're guarded. Stop getting all been out of shape talk folks say stuff to you all the time. It's the fact you just show, watch it, it showed that you went outside with no clothes on. And we got too many naked saints running around in the city. They left the house without being armed. 
against the wiles against your mind. Yes. Right? You got to be armed. Satan already know you ain't prayed up and put no clothes on. And then he can sit there and lash you. Ain't nothing like getting a lashing on some naked skin. Ain't <laughs> 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 eating sweet cake as a slap your mama. But let somebody lash you, you, you hit everything moving, right? And that's what I want. I want to show you that imagery picture so you can see yourself. You have to be guarded. Number two, warriors are good. Psalm 34, uh, uh, 34 and 14, it says, says, resist evil and do good and the peace of the Lord will be with you. Some of you want to do what you want to do and want God's peace. It ain't going to happen. It only happens when we watch to submit ourselves to the will of God and do what he has called us to do. Somebody ought to do good. And then number three, be gracious. It's a way to answer. It's a way to do anything in life. You can do it with grace. The same measure you beat out to other folks, same measure be back to you again. Some of you hard. Ain't nobody do nothing bad by you. You're going to punish everybody. But don't you know when you like that God is watching when you're not graceful? Oh, my God. They got quiet. God is watching when you're not graceful. You got to know it's some time to fight. And you got to know it's some time to hold your peace. Uh, that's great. Yes, sir. Praise the Lord. And then the last thing is lead. A mark. Leave a mark. Leave a mark. This is your legacy. Write down Romans chapter 1 verse 8. Read when you get home. This is your legacy. What do we get when you die? What do we get when you die? That's my first one of my first questions in marriage account. And I ask. They so happy they bowled over. <laughs> no, no, I better, I better down there on, on the six and yeah, they better. And man, when I see them, love that person. Don't say, we won't. Yeah, man, I'm telling you, I seen her and I knew it was the Lord that gave me this girl. And then I say, well, what do you, what does she get when you die, huh? I said, when you die, what does she get? Uh, he looked at her, she like this. <laughs> y'all, y'all ain't gonna say amen to this. Amen. Lee, if you sit by a sexy woman here and say, he better to be dead than he is alive. I need, I need to know what kind of benefits it has. Okay. Leave a mark, first of all, here you go, and I'm closing. Leave a mark, number one, let it include your children. Yes. Your mark has to include your children. So you say sanctified, you do right by everybody. Let me ask you this. How are your kids? Are they in the Lord? Well, you got work to do. 2019, you're going to work on that. Well, pastor, they won't come to church. How they won't come to church? They got you. Call and you do devotional with them. You call and you pray with them and let them pray for you on the phone. If you keep massaging that relationship after a while, after a while, it all be over. After a while, the sun is going to shine. I think y'all too young. Y'all don't know about those kind of songs. But include your children in your legacy. That's what you have to do. Number two, endure until completion. Endure until completion. Don't you quit till it's over. Sam Ballard and Tobias in, New in, Numbers, uh, in Nehemiah chapter 2 was fighting against Nehemiah. And Nehemiah said, I'm not slutting there. 